the moment you want the truth, as badly as you just now wanted air, you'll find it. We can show you the truth, but you have to want it. Show me. I want to know the truth. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing, and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. After this, Jesus, knowing that all things were now accomplished, that the scripture might be fulfilled, saith, I thirst. Now there was set a vessel full of vinegar, and they filled a sponge with vinegar, and put it upon hyssop, and put it to his mouth. When Jesus therefore had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head, and gave up the ghost. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh.
Shifting our focus to Japan now, the country's southernmost island of Okinawa was rattled this afternoon by an earthquake of magnitude 5.7. According to the Japan Meteorological Agency, the quake hit at 2.20 p.m. with a depth of 40 kilometers below sea level. It went on for approximately one minute and followed another tremor measuring 5.5 just minutes earlier off the coast of Hokkaido, Japan's northernmost island. No immediate injuries or damage have been reported. Swollen rivers and creeks have prompted evacuations and curfews in Iowa and Wisconsin, flooding threatening thousands of residents and businesses. Over the past week, thunderstorms have dumped heavy rain over the region. Charlene Aaron has the story. Residents in Cedar Rapids are facing the threat of dangerous flooding as the Cedar River is expected to crest at 23 feet today. More than 10,000 people have been evacuated from homes and businesses. We have pretty much all of our essential things, um, pretty much all of our clothes are with us, so we have her bed. Our bed's still upstairs, but whatever, that's fine. City officials urged residents to evacuate their homes over the weekend as floodwaters began to spill out of the swollen Cedar River. On Monday, the river level reached 20 feet and was quickly rising. City employees and volunteers have tried to mitigate damage from flooding and warned that people were still under significant risk if they did not abandon the areas near the river. In San Antonio, Texas, this aerial footage shows massive flooding and the threat of flash flooding remains as heavy rains continue to hammer the region. Meanwhile, in Iowa, hundreds of volunteers are installing barriers and sandbags on both sides of the river ahead of more flooding. Dangerous drinking water? A new report shows a chemical is in tap water and you might not even know about it. Four in your corners, Deborah Souverain went county by county here in southwest Florida to see just how safe our water is and she joins me live in the newsroom with what she found. Deborah? Amy, chromium-6 is a known cancer-causing chemical. However, most people out there aren't even aware that they're consuming it. And what I found out about our local tap water may surprise you. Each colored area on this map shows where a cancer-causing chemical called chromium-6 was found in tap water. The chemical was made famous by the film Aaron Brockovich. Exovalent chromium can be very harmful. So it kills people. Oh yeah. Which tells the story of a single mother who exposed the California utility company for contaminating their water with chromium-6. But a new study is revealing the chemical is a widespread problem, and it's in your tap water too. Test samples show Lee, Charlotte, and Collier counties all tested positive for the carcinogenic chemical. Collier County showing the highest levels in the area, with the greatest concentration found in Naples tap water. Several of Lee County's water supplies also tested positive, with Cape Coral's water supply showing the strongest levels of chromium-6, and Charlotte, which had the lowest numbers in the region. They're all well over the .02 parts per billion, recommended by the California Office of Environmental Health Hazard Assessment. In fact, according to the recent study, this chemical many of us are consuming is linked to lung cancer and reproductive problems. Red tide has hit Suncoast beaches and beachgoers are concerned for their health. SNN's Ben Bobick is live in the newsroom now with an update. Ben, what can you tell us? Well, if you plan on hitting the beach, you may be accompanied by some unexpected guests. Dead fish line the beaches at Lido, Siesta, and as far south as Nokomis. Red tide may be affecting your weekend trip to the beach. There was dead fish all over the beach. Yeah. And not o only o all over the beach, but in the water. Miss Chase was correct in assuming the red tide hit Nokomis Beach late Thursday afternoon. Beachgoers were held to a minimum Friday due to the amount of dead fish on the beach. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, 
look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Children as young as 10 are regularly sexting their classmates with nude and semi-nude photos. The revelations have prompted Sunrise parenting expert Michael Cargreg to urge parents to report any child who has a social media account underage. Darren, do too many parents think it's okay for 10-year-olds to be on social media? Well, yes. Uh, look, I'm so out of date. I am. I used to say for years that, look, don't let your kids have a computer in the bedroom. Make sure it's out in the lounge and you see what they're doing with their computer, what they're looking at. Now, of course, the way phones have gone, kids all have access to them for, for safety reasons, etc., etc. The one thing I would say, though, in all this, and you need parental control, but I would not, I, or even though I'm going for this National Public Register of Convicted Sex Offenders, just want to say that if it's teenagers and kids sexting, that doesn't put you on the register. I mean, you're children, so that won't happen. But I think parents need to be far more, far more um, vigilant about this because. Uh, uh, you know, in, in some countries, in some states, you can go on, go on a sex register for life because you were a kid just sending pictures to, to, to a friend. Yeah, Pauline, how do we stop kids as young as 10 sexting? OK, guys, I'll tell you, parents be parents. Why do we need kids with smart iPhones at 9, 10 years of age? Why don't we give them the cheap ones that you can buy from Woolies for $30? All they need, if they need a phone for security reasons, give them the phone for that. Mm -hmm. It is harder to, you know, for the image to come through with texting. What's happened with kids these days that um, we're treating them as adults? Where are the days the kids got on their bikes, go and play out in the yard, get outside, but they're all on their phones? It is, it is absolutely take them out of having any social abilities. They feel that they've got to keep up with their peers. It is not good enough. Parents, start taking up the job. Keep watch on your kids. Don't give them what they want. If they want a phone, say no. You don't get a phone. You don't get a phone till you're 13. We never sort of grew up till we actually went to high school and then we started, you know, um, got a little bit older. But we were kids. Take them back. Let them be kids. According to NBC News, on Tuesday, a healthy baby was born after it was conceived using a three-parent technique to manipulate its DNA. Fertility specialists from U.S. cities of New York and Cincinnati and the country of Great Britain teamed up in Mexico for the experimental treatment because it has not been approved in the U.S. The birth of the child is not the first three-parent treatment, but it is the first healthy modern birth. The treatment was performed because of the mother carries a genetic defect known to cause the incurable Lee syndrome. A second woman's DNA was introduced to replace the faulty genetic material of the birth mother. A now five-month-old baby boy is the first worldwide to be born using a controversial technique that combines DNA from three people. Reported Tuesday by New Scientist magazine, this method is designed to help couples who carry rare genetic mutations have healthy children. According to New Scientist, this procedure resulted in five embryos, only one of which matured in a normal way. It was this embryo that was implanted into the Jordanian mother who gave birth to a healthy baby. This week, a newborn with three different genetic parents has been revealed to the world. Scientists waited five months before letting the public know about the infant. The newborn has three genetic parents because his mother had the gene of Lay syndrome. In order to prevent the child from having Lay syndrome, a fatal nervous system disorder, a donor gave DNA that would stop the disorder from being passed on. Scientists swapped out the mother's DNA with the donors and it worked. The controversial fertility technique that has produced the world's first so-called three-parent baby was reported on Tuesday. The procedure uses genetic material from one man and two women. It intends to stop mothers from passing down genetic disorders to their children. The child was born sometime in April in Mexico. Experts are calling it a revolutionary breakthrough. On Capitol Hill, a U.S. senator is looking into the legality of President Obama's transgender bathroom guidance to every public school in America. 
Oklahoma Senator James Lankford says too often the Obama administration attaches new regulations to old laws in order to get around Congress. His subcommittee on regulatory affairs this week questioned representatives from the Departments of Labor and Education about how they justify the sweeping guidance. I mean, they just created this really odd rule uh, that takes away people's individual privacy uh, for the sake of preference for another group. Uh, we need to be able to protect all groups in this process and to be able to honor. They need to have some basic what's called notice and comment. They created this rule, didn't ask anyone, just tried to impose it. That's not how we are as Americans. We're still a country of the people, by the people, for the people. And when the people get cut out, it doesn't work. Last month, a federal judge in Texas blocked the president's bathroom guidance. The Supreme Court is now deciding whether to hear the case. A new law in Norway means children as young as six years old can choose their gender. Until July, Norway was one of 32 European countries that required people to undergo irreversible sterilization before their gender change would be re legally recognized. Ten-year-old Anna is one of nine children who have taken advantage of the new measure. It allows Norwegian children to self-identify as male or female with their parents' consent. In some weeks, I'm going to have a new passport, and then it's going to say F. My name is Anna, and yeah, so that's going to be great. I think it's a beautiful thing that Norway finally can uh, recognize her as the girl she actually feels she is. So far, Norway has not refused a single gender application for an adult or child. There's no requirement for surgical or psychological intervention or approval. Legal officials say the process is simple. Applicants just go online and fill out a form. A transgender bathroom issue in a Dripping Springs Elementary School has parents picking sides. Tomorrow night, they are expected to pack the school board meeting either to show support for a student or tell the district it's gone too far. KXA and education reporter Aaron Cargill has this story. I certainly believe that the district has done the right thing. Andy Hutton's heart goes out to a child at his son's school. We heard that there was a, a text that was going around school rallying uh, parents who were trying to exclude this third grade girl. A student at Walnut Springs Elementary, born as a boy but identifies as a girl, who parents say has been allowed to use the girls' bathroom with multiple stalls since the beginning of this school year. I don't see any problem at all. I think a lot of parents are wondering why, you know, how did the school board and the superintendent come to this decision or the principals to start allowing boys in the girls' bathrooms? And, um, and how much more of this are we going to see? Jonathan Signs with Texas Values, a group of Christian conservative advocates, has been helping parents address their discontent with school officials. Parents were not notified from what we're hearing. They haven't been made aware of this, and so a lot of people feel like this information was hidden from them. We reached out to the Dripping School District for comment. The communications director said she'll have something for us tomorrow. State Representative Jason Isaac from Dripping Springs said, quote, I'm still studying the issue. However, I do not think any boys, no matter their age, should be using girls' restrooms and vice versa. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. These things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine. Babylon, in one hour thy judgment come.
A religious billboard in Brunswick is causing some to question the separation of church and state in the city. Yeah, it says Jesus is Lord, and then you see the names of the mayor, and of course the city council is listed there. Action News Jack's Letitia Bariola joins us live in Brunswick. And Letitia, you found out a private citizen put up the billboard with the mayor's blessing. That's right. No tax dollars were used to put up this religious message here on the billboard. Even though you see the mayor's name and the city council there, a local business owner put it up, and now she's feeling some pressure to take it down. Victoria Hightower is a longtime Brunswick business owner. She owns the billboard and the property it stands on. Hightower is proud of her city and its elected officials. I wanted to honor our mayor, which is a, a very elegant man, and, and, and the city council members are very elegant, too. She's also proud of her faith and thought to combine the two on her billboard. She says she called Mayor Cornell Harvey, who gave her permission to use his name. I just wanted people to know that uh, God loves them. However, the billboard is coming down. Hightower says she felt pressure from the city manager to remove it. He had had some calls and there were some issues with some people uh, that they didn't want it up and, uh, and uh, something called separation of church and state. I went to City Hall and asked the mayor, why give the green light only to have your city manager say it should come down? He told me he didn't know his city manager made that call. I haven't talked with Ms. Hightower about it. I haven't talked to the city manager about it either. He also responded to criticism from people who think the government shouldn't intertwine itself with religion. I'm not trying to make any kind of statement. I'm just saying that, you know, welcome to Brunswick. I see. And, and it just so happened that I am a Christian. He also apologizes to anyone who is offended and said that all faiths are welcome here in Brunswick. Also, the business owner told me that she is leasing out this billboard to another person starting October 1st. Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They did eat. They drank. They married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and the flood came and destroyed them all. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they builded. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. In the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. If you're someone that has not called upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, look around the world, grab a Bible, it's there for you so you can see the truth and that so the truth can set you free. And I know you might be thinking, I'm a good person. Why do I need Jesus? Because we all have the sin penalty of death and eternity separated from God. But God loves the world so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Time is short. It's always short. Today is always the day of salvation because we could breathe our last breath today. And if you woke up today, after you die, would you wake up in an eternity with God or an eternity separated from God? The choice is yours. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Jesus Christ died on that cross so that you can be forgiven. What must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanseth us from all sin. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. into judgment Ben Judah, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. I, the Lord, search the heart, I test the mind, and I will give every man according to his ways and according to the things he has done. By the deeds of the law, no flesh shall be justified in his sight. For by grace you are saved, through faith, this is not for yourselves. It is the gift of God. Be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, to save the world through him. He who believes in the Son is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Repent. Jesus is coming. Don't throw your life away. Give it to Jesus while there's still time, please. And he will hold us accountable. Time is running out, and I don't want you to go to hell. <laughs> You've sinned against God, like I have. He calls us to love and obey Him in everything we do, what we do in front of people, what we do in secret, even down to what we think. God loves you. 2,000 years ago, He proved that. God became a man. Jesus Christ, and he suffered and died on the cross to save you. He literally died to take your punishment and my punishment upon himself so that we could be forgiven and set free. When Jesus rose from the dead and he ascended to heaven, he defeated death and hell, and he's offering you and I eternal life. God can do anything. If you are willing, God can save you. Confess your sins and turn away from them. And put your faith in Jesus Christ. Jesus, if it's not too late, forgive me for my sins. Jesus is King. Jesus is King, He is Lord forevermore, Jesus is coming soon, He is Lord forevermore, He is coming soon.